the female narcissist. Fascinating creature. Scary. Highly manipulative and deceptive. Dangerous even. And that is what I'm covering today. The top 10 behaviors and traits of the female narcissist. You ready? Let's do it. Hey friends, Tammy and Joyce here, empowerment life coach, creator of the Freedom Class and the Ascension Class. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Please take a second to say hello and introduce yourself in the comment section below. And if you're back, of course, as always, welcome back. Thanks for showing up and for tuning in. Either way, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new video. So let's unpack the top 10 behaviors and traits of the female narcissist. Beginning with number one, she's hypersensitive and reactive. Female narcissists are often more emotional than their male counterparts, which also makes them more likely to be super sensitive, volatile, and not just reactive, but explosive nuclear in their reactivity. The interesting thing about the female narcissist is this, after her nuclear explosion and the abusive tirade that goes along with it, she'll simmer down, resume her feigned, sweet, demure demeanor, and act as if nothing happened. And she doesn't know why you're so upset or why you're still reeling from and have feelings about the emotional violence that just took place and or the abuse and betrayal you've just endured. This woman has the ability to gaslight you by pretending nothing unusual just went down in a way that can only mean one of two things. Either you imagine the whole thing and are therefore the one who's overreacting and hypersensitive, or she's sick mentally, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually quite unwell. So when she pulls that crap, don't get it even on you. Remember, you know what you live. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise by pretending what just happened didn't happen. No bueno. Now, while all narcissists tend to be sensitive to even the mere hint of perceived criticism, female narcissists are often far more prone to being hurt, offended, or upset by others for very little reason. In particular, anyone who isn't reflecting back to them their idea of perfection and superiority. Even the mere hint of pushback on the notion that they are all they want you to believe that they are is often enough to set them off. Again, the female narcissist is incredibly sensitive to even so much as a hint of perceived criticism and as such will either lash out or become hyper defensive and extremely critical themselves. The moment they feel you may be shining a light on anything none too flattering where they're concerned, you'll know it. Whether they lash out passively or aggressively, whether they lash out now or go stone cold silent and lash out later, either way, brace yourself because the lashing is coming. The thing is, the female narcissist cannot tolerate any kind of feedback or, as I said, even perceived criticism even constructive criticism, no matter how kind or helpful or honest the feedback might be. She takes everything very personally. Remember, she has to be seen as special and superior and fundamentally without blemish or flaw. So this is not a person that you are ever going to be able to have an open, honest conversation with. She's not interested in any version of reality that might shine a light on where she's coming up short or otherwise dropping the ball in the friendship or any relationship. So don't go there. Or if you do, do it for you with zero expectation of being heard, understood, or validated in any way. She'll be far too busy denying, defending, deflecting, justifying, rationalizing, projecting, and of course, blame shifting to be able to hear you. And the higher she is on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, the more intense and emotionally violent her attack would be. Narcissists in general will refuse to be held accountable for the shitty way they show up in the friendship or again, any relationship. They are never ever wrong, never ever responsible, never ever accountable, never ever flawed in any way. So, if you're telling her what she's doing or isn't doing is hurting you, you'll be accused of hurting her. I mean, 
how dare you shine a light on the truth of the matter? You don't get to do that ever with a woman who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism. That's against the rules, her rules. Trait number two, crazy making communication. This, of course, includes lying outright, lying by omission, conveniently leaving out important facts and graping huge chunks of the story. It also includes distorting, misleading, gaslighting, and all manner of circular, mind-bending, crazy-making communication. So this begs the question, how do you have an adult-to-adult, -adult, open, authentic, honest, and vulnerable conversation with a woman who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism? Well, you don't. <laughs> like I said earlier, if you choose to waste your breath, waste your time and your vital life force energy, do it for you with zero expectation of her being able to get real. She can't. So knowing that, don't do it with any expectation of being heard, understood, or validated. It isn't going to happen. She isn't capable. So say what you must if you feel that you need to for your own sake. In particular, if you know it's likely the last time you're ever going to bother speaking your piece with this woman. Say what you need to and then walk away. Close the door and go live your best life. The thing is, you have to abandon the fantasy that she is ever going to be able to see you, hear you, get it, or get you. You must abandon all attempts at sincere, authentic, open lines of communication when communication, communicating rather, with the terminally inauthentic and insincere. Because the truth is, that is who and what you're dealing with. The terminally inauthentic and insincere. Furthermore, know in advance that when she feels that her back is against the wall, she will use your disclosures against you. All that you've shared about your life, your history, other relationship challenges, what you do, how you feel, what's happening in your life, and who you really are, all of it, can and will be used against you the moment she feels the need to go on the defensive or the attack. Given the opportunity, and in particular once she sees that you're not dancing to the beat of her drum and her delusional reality, she will attack you. She will attack your character, your reputation, your sense of self, and your sense of self-worth. She'll even attack your perception of reality. As much as she may have been good at pretending otherwise, you'll find out soon enough that she actually doesn't give a flying bleep about how you feel. Especially if how you feel highlights any shortcoming, character defect, or relationship crime on her part. Furthermore, she doesn't care what you think. As far as she's concerned, she'll tell you what to think and when to think it. And veering off that path and her perception her perception of you, of her, and of reality according to her is again against the rules, her rules. And the backlash for breaking her rules will be real. Trait number three of the female narcissist is a shocking sense of entitlement. That's right. In her mind, she is absolutely entitled. Entitled to being viewed as special and superior. Entitled to special treatment. Entitled to lie to gossip, to smear your character and reputation. And in that, she absolutely feels entitled to openly share things that were spoken in confidence. In other words, she feels entitled to betray you and your confidence, you know, because she's special and superior. In addition, the female narcissist feels entitled to do things like show up on your doorstep unannounced, entitled to book a plane ticket and announce after the fact her arrival date as your house guest without an invitation or prior warning. If she does call to let you know she's coming, she feels entitled to access to your home at her discretion. So how dare you say something like, um, now's not a good time? Again, remember, she doesn't care about you or your feelings or how an unexpected visit might inconvenience you. You, your comfort, your well-being, your preference, these are not things that are ever on her radar. The female narcissist will also feel entitled to burden you with her problems. Problems she has created and perpetuates and then dumps in your lap or in your life, on your doorstep, with the entitled expectation that you drop everything in your world and rush to fix who or what she broke. 
In my experience, the sense of entitlement of the female narcissist is beyond shocking. And one very specific way you'll often be shocked by her sense of entitlement is her shameless disregard for your personal limits and boundaries. These are people who quite literally feel entitled to hurt you with zero guilt, shame, or remorse, even where children are concerned. Her shameless disregard for your personal limits and boundaries combined with her inflated sense of entitlement and delusional perception of herself as special and superior is exactly how and why she can do the damage she does and not so much as bat an eyelash. And sadly, as I said, this is true even where children are concerned. Narcissists being the toxic bullies and cowards that they are, this is often the reality for people exposed to them. The female narcissist will feel entitled to hurt someone else's child. And I mean do serious damage if she thinks she can get away with it. Like, for example, nieces, nephews, their stepchildren, any child in their charge who isn't being properly cared for and protected will be at risk when exposed to the female narcissist. Now, what's worse is they'll then claim to be the victim of the awful children they've either abused, abandoned, or both. It's really a special kind of sick, I tell you. Trait number four is stonewalling through the silent treatment. Now this nasty little number is employed for no other reason than to punish you and to send a very clear message that you are unworthy and undeserving of her attention. Now, this includes ghosting without warning or explanation or even provocation. She'll refuse to acknowledge your presence, disappear without warning or explanation, just ghost you. It also includes withholding behavior, such as withholding love, validation, approval, encouragement, or even a simple acknowledgement of anything you may have accomplished or may have going well or be doing right. They'll even withhold sex as a means of punishment and control, whatever works for them. The bottom line is, however they choose to do it, giving you the cold shoulder is without question one of the female narcissist's favorite abuse tactics. Again, the intent is to send a very clear message. You are unworthy, undeserving, inferior, and they are superior in every way, according to them, that is. Now, comment below and let me know whether or not you've experienced any of these traits with a female narcissist in your life. And if so, how'd you handle it? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you're struggling with narcissistic abuse in any area of your life, you're likely an excellent candidate for my eight week transformational coaching program, the freedom class. If that's of interest to you, there's a link in the description below this video where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. In addition, there's also a free gift section in the description below this video. So be sure to avail yourself of that as well. Next on the list of traits of the female narcissist is number five. They are selfish, self-centered, and fully self-absorbed to the extreme. This will likely be one of your very first clues that you're dealing with a woman with a destructive narcissist personality pattern. If she's overt, the selfishness and self-absorption will be very obvious, and of course, overt, once she's done manipulating you through flattery and other love bombing techniques, that is. If, however, she's more covert, the selfishness and self-absorption will be less obvious and in your face as she'll present as meek, demure, and self-deprecating. But make no mistake, she suffers just as much from a delusional sense of terminal specialness and superiority as her more grandiose counterpart does. She simply prefers to manipulate you and your perception using slightly different tactics, that's all. The point being, selfishness and self-centeredness are hallmark signs of a destructive narcissist personality pattern. And this of course is true in both men and women who land on the spectrum of destructive narcissism. So a big red flag and telltale sign will be that she will spend a lot of time, I mean a disproportionate amount of time, talking about herself and her life without thinking to ask how others are doing. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with talking about yourself and your life with the people you share your life with. 
But when dealing with someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, it will be all about them always. It's rarely, if ever, anyone else's turn. Why? Because they don't care. They simply do not care to hear about you and your life. Such is the degree of selfishness and self-centeredness and self-absorption. When in the presence of a female narcissist, you'll notice that when people do interject to talk about themselves and their lives, the female narcissist will show little genuine interest and instead will wait for the first opportunity to quickly turn the conversation back to herself. You know, nose firmly implanted in little navel, hanging on to her little toesies. That's what you're dealing with, as if her self-absorption is cute or something. Trait number six of the female narcissist, she is fully obsessed with social status. Being shallow and superficial is a common trait in both male and female narcissists for sure. In women with a destructive narcissist personality pattern, this might show up as a tendency to be overly materialistic or preoccupied with brand names, luxury items, or other status symbols associated with being wealthy. And again, don't hear what I'm not saying. Don't get me wrong. There is absolutely nothing wrong with liking or even wanting to have and enjoy nice things. It's the obsessive component that is a red flag here. The disproportionate focus and attention on these things and the way in which she seems to think that these things enhance her value, her worth, and her status somehow. In addition, this obsession with social status may include excessive concern about social standing, her reputation, and how others see her what they think or how they feel about her, as well as a really unhealthy obsession with her appearance. Again, obsession being the operative word here. Trait number seven, women with a destructive narcissist personality pattern will be more likely to capitalize on their sex appeal or physical attractiveness to the point of using, abusing, and exploiting others with zero concern for the detrimental effects her highly manipulative and seductive behavior has on the other, or their loved ones for that matter. Recent studies have found that many female narcissists dress in sexually prov provocative ways, like dressing in revealing clothing or being overly done up when the occasion doesn't call for it, as a means of inappropriately seeking attention from the opposite sex. Now, some may use sexual seduction as a way to manipulate or financially exploit others. They may even become involved in sexual relationships with people who can help or support them in some way. In other words, let's call it what it is. Use their sex appeal to prostitute themselves for their own personal gain and with deliberate intent to manipulate and exploit others to their detriment. So again, know up front that she uses her sexuality to take advantage of and hurt other people. This is a primary tool of the female narcissist. She dresses provocatively and will happily have affairs with her partner's friends and or family and gets a sick kick out of the very hurtful and dangerous game she's playing while she's at it, for real. Number eight, guilt tripping and toxic shame. Now, you know you're dealing with a narcissistic woman when she uses guilt and shame to manipulate you into doing her bidding and getting her own way. She'll use guilt tripping and toxic shame to emasculate the man in her life. She'll use emotional blackmail to imply that something bad will happen if the other person does not comply with her wishes or demands. She'll use guilt, shame, or fear even to get a person to fall in line and act the way she wants them to act, to control them fundamentally. And make no mistake, this is emotional and psychological abuse. Long-term exposure to someone who uses emotional blackmail to manipulate, dominate, and control you will have a negative and detrimental effect on your sense of self-worth and self-esteem. So do not underestimate just how toxic and destructive this abuse tactic is. Trait number nine, the female narcissist is absolutely sneaky and conniving. She will go so far as to secretly allow something harmful to happen and literally just sit back and watch with great glee and delight. She's the epitome of the smiling knife, 
smiling to your face, acting as if all is well, while she assassinates your character and works to sabotage you and your relationship with others behind your back. And weren't you on to her? She'll put on the doe eyes and pretend to have no ever loving idea how you could even begin to think that she's capable of behaving so badly. Who, me? How could you? For real, remember, she's a sneak and a conniving woman. Conniving is all get out. Moreover, she's extremely competitive and inherently jealous. And she'll probably be really, really good at hiding her jealousy and the way she secretly competes with you. If you feel like you can't trust her as far as you can throw her, trust that feeling. You're probably right. And last but not least, trait number 10, triangulation. Now, the truth is all narcissists triangulate, but this is a special talent for the female narcissist. She will quite literally go out of her way to gather the troops and pull whoever she can onto her team. And usually she's really good at it. She's had a lot of practice. Female narcissists are well known for causing problems between family and friends. They will commonly tell one person something about another, knowing full well this will cause problems between these two people, or at least she sure hopes it does. They will often twist, embellish, lie outright, and lie by omission, whatever it takes. They'll create the story in a way to make sure emotions are extra heated and then sit back again with a bizarre sense of glee and delight, watching the drama unfold, the drama they've just manufactured out of thin air, while claiming to be innocent and as pure as the driven snow, having no ever loving idea what the fuss is all about. And they often have a special talent for doing this between their own children. That's true, narcissistic mothers are very skilled when it comes to causing problems between siblings. If you are unfortunate enough to have a narcissistic mother or mother-in-law, then you already know what I'm talking about. She's a real piece of work. She does a lot of damage. And moreover, she feels entitled to do so with zero guilt, zero shame, or zero remorse. In my view, your best bet is always going to be to steer clear no matter who she is and focus on your own well-being so you can live your best life without all the extra that the female narcissist brings to the table of the relationship. It's time now. And on that note, I'm going to call it a wrap. But before I go, I want to let you know that the Ascension class is open for enrollment. Now, this isn't for everybody. This is for you if you're ready and able to invest in yourself. If you're ready to shift your identity, master the law of attraction, heal your relationship with money, and put a full stop end to the limiting beliefs and self-sabotaging behaviors that are holding you back and preventing you from living your best life. If you're ready to reinvent yourself from the inside out, create your dream life by design, and finally become the you you were always meant to be, then click on the link in the description below this video to apply to see if you qualify for a one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team.